Hi, I'm Andrew Karlovsky. And I'm Alfred Rubieskis, and this is the Tailwind Flash Briefing. Earlier this month, Google introduced more automation features and campaign types to its beta users. This includes a new Insights page, Performance Max campaigns, and Video Action campaigns. The new Insights page will allow advertisers to see currently trending searches, auction insights, as well as interest predictions tailored to their account. Importantly, it also includes prospective competitor performance, and Google says it will be adding more audience and forecasting data in the future. Performance Max campaigns are going to be a new campaign type that can run across all Google-owned and operated properties. They'll be eligible to serve on both the Display Network, YouTube, Gmail, Discover, and Search Networks via dynamic search ads and are meant to complement standard search campaigns. The idea is to set up one campaign to reach across all of their inventory rather than create specialized ads for those specific channels. Uh, with that being said, Performance Max campaigns are still in beta and more advertisers will be invited next year. And lastly, Google plans to release video action campaigns that will run on YouTube and Google Video Partners. The tech company plans to test direct response in this format and on TV screens since more and more people are watching YouTube from their television through over-the-top services like Amazon Fire, or Google Chromecast. So Andrew, do you think businesses should alter their campaigns based on the trends and predictions found in those insight page? I think there's some value to it, uh, particularly in the competitive analysis, knowing in a more quick and accessible fashion, what competitors are bidding on your keywords, how it's affecting your, you know, your conversions and you know, what opportunities have really sprung up that maybe you haven't had the time to pick out from Google Trends data within the last you know, two to 10 days that you can really capitalize on. I think there are some uh, potential negatives there because if Google knows it, then your competitors know it as well and you'll likely get into a bit of a bid war. So though valuable, expect these to be a little bit more expensive if you're in a highly competitive space. Do you think it would be beneficial to use performance max campaigns instead of creating specialized ads for each channel? Uh, I do. Uh, so when, when you think about these types of automated campaigns from Google, you always have to think about it as a, how much time are they saving and can we do it better than Google on our end? And in the past, we've found that really getting deep into these different tactics and splitting it out into their own campaigns is beneficial. But if you're working with a limited number of hours, smaller budgets, or just don't have the sophistication with regards to the targeting that you're trying to suss out, these types of campaigns can be a great opportunity to really run on a whole host of different platforms and get some preliminary insights into what platforms are working and why might they be working. Uh, th that is, if you have creative that can be served on all of these platforms, which is a key consideration for a number of smaller clients, because you will need uh, advert ads that can be served in a variety of different formats. You mentioned direct response video ad formats on TV screens. Do you think maybe consumers could find that a bit intrusive? Personally, um, I've been getting these in a, in a variety of different places. I believe Hulu was the first place that I came across a direct response video ad. And as long as I can skip it, I don't think it's particularly intrusive. It's about the same as all of the different formats that we've seen for you know, uh, lift surveys or do you recognize this competitor surveys that we've been getting on YouTube for quite some time. So I don't think it's a particularly different experience for users, but it might be valuable to companies uh, particularly those that have, you know, something valuable to give in return for that direct response, like a white paper, a newsletter, some sort of coupon. Although we would caution, like any type of format that breaks down the barriers to conversion, you are going to run into a higher uh, number of uh, invalid leads or, or junk leads from users who are just clicking a button to get through the ad. Our second story of the week is about Cameo recently beginning to market their custom celebrity video services to businesses as a new revenue opportunity. For those who don't know, Cameo is a service that uses celebrities ranging from musicians like Snoop Dogg to actors like Bob Saget. Users pay a fixed fee for the celebrities to deliver a customized message, whatever they want. Previously, this was solely used for events like maybe a birthday or something of a sort, but now Cameo is trying to change that. Sales and relationship management executives were already starting to use Cameo in their work, particularly as the coronavirus pandemic put a lid on in-person networking, according to Arthur Leopold, 
the chief business officer at Cameo. Recently, sales insight company Gong.io even hired Lindsay Lohan to message an executive for their achievements, as well as Chris Diamantopoulos to promote their conference. Gong claimed that their Cameos gained a lot of traction on LinkedIn in particular. Cameo already offers a promotional video of its service in which celebrities agree to endorse products for a higher fee is now testing live chats with celebrities. Interesting. Do you think this could be an effective way for businesses to market themselves during the pandemic? That's a good question, Andrew, and I'm kind of iffy on it. On one hand, I like to think that businesses are less emotional, more about the facts, maybe not care a little bit less about celebrity testimonials and promotions. On the other hand, I know people are fallible and um, maybe even the smartest, most important pe person in a business, they can make a decision based on seeing a celebrity they really like in their videos or even just getting the thought that, oh, this is really cool in their mind and it's going to stick with them. So, so, you, so do you think it has more to do with that perspective of I want to stand out? I want something that's going to capture people's attention during this time. Where everyone's really getting bombarded with ads. In a more right. Generic right. I, that's, that's how I feel. Just any little thing you can do to stick out. It's, I think it's a good thing in this time. Uh, so what types of companies do you think this would be most useful for? I think this is most useful for if you're in an industry where products aren't very differentiated, uh, you and your competitors are neck and neck, prices are neck and neck. I think when that's the case, that's when it's going to be most important to maybe get a cameo and do whatever you can to stick out. Yeah, I imagine that as particularly if you could find maybe someone whose uh, celebrity brand is more aligned with your vertical, I could imagine someone in the IT space trying to grab you know, someone who plays a character like Sheldon on The Big Bang Theory. Do, do you really, do you think, that, that being said, do you think that they'll come off as authentic or as more of a gimmick? Again, this is where I'm a bit iffy on it. Um, to me, it's it's a bit of a gimmick. Like like I said, I like to think that businesses aren't going to make a decision based on, you know, whatever celebrity testimonials there are. But, you know, like I said, it, it can't really hurt. Even if it is a gimmick, it can't hurt in this time. So take it as it is. On that cool note, I'm Andrew Karlovsky. I'm Alfred Rubieskis. Thanks for tuning into this week's episode of the Tale and Flash Briefing, and be sure to keep an eye out for our next episode.